Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are continuing on with our trend of Gen 4 tuning looking at speed density or the virtual volumetric efficiency tuning table. That is a mouthful. Ugh. But listen, first I want to thank all the new subscribers, man. We're about to break, I think 3,500, man. I, wow. uh, you know, th it's, that's awesome. This is a community. I do this because of you guys, but I can't do it without you guys. And so if you have not clicked that subscribe button, it's usually kind of down in this area, I think. Nonetheless, you'll find it. Click that subscribe button. But quick disclaimer, one of multiple. If you click that button, you will learn how to tune. So you've been warned. But that being said, I also want to thank all the new patrons out there. Uh, let me go ahead and pimp my patron because, you know, those guys are really helping helping to keep me supported through this. But on top of it, it's a cool way you get some free gear. Uh, you get early access to stuff. You get, uh, there, we do drawings and competitions over there. And then on top of it, there's the higher level tier that actually gets an email where you can send me tunes. We can walk through tunes together. And, you know, so it's out there in case you guys want to check it out in the description. Uh, on top of it, uh, you know, the best thing that you can do for this is to hit that thumbs up button and to share this for anybody that you think might find this information useful. And you guys have been great about that so far. So I want to thank everybody out there that has been sharing this. It has made a huge difference. I, I'm just blown away. I mean, I am truly blown away. I love you guys. Love the garage, man. And you guys are the garage. I'm just here to kind of condense all this information down and make sure that we stay on track on some of this stuff. But that being said, let's go ahead and Rock the normal disclaimer out real quick, and then we will come back to the tuning screen, and we will dive into uh, speed density tuning on the Gen 4s. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage, and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we are working on the same platform as we did on the MAF airflow sensor. In this case, it's 2009 Corvette. Uh, if your stuff looks a little bit different, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and then maybe I can do a video specifically on that. If it, As long as it's Gen 4. Make sure that it's a Gen 4 platform. If yours is a Gen 3, and it, it's going to look different. So there's another video out for that one. I'm just kidding. But let's dive into this. Let's take a look at it. The, and you know my process by now. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know my process. But if you're new, what I like to do is I like to get what is called an as-found. We grab a copy of the tune out of the vehicle. We save that as the as-found. So we're going to go through this process like we're doing that. So I'm going to save this stock file as-found. Boom. That one will be unmolested. We're not touching that one. So what we need to do right after saving the as-found is save our first step. So we come in here, do another save as I'm going to label this one SD Step 1, Speed Density Tuning Step 1. We're going to save that, and that's going to be the file that we edit. The As Found will be a reference file because we changed some parameters. It's good to have a reference file to go back and reset those whenever we're done, specifically because we have to force the math off. So, back in the old days, we used to be able to just unplug, unplug not unplug. I don't know what unplugging is, but we can't do it in this situation. But we used to unplug the math airflow sensor and... That was how we knew that the math was failed. Nowadays, though, there's additional sensors in that, such as IATs and things like that. So it's not an option to unplug that unless you have those things broken out. So let's start underneath engine diagnostics and underneath the airflow tab. This is the first one. We need to fail this math uh, frequency high. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to bump the low down to 1 hertz and the high to 2 hertz. And so we're guaranteed to go into fail soon as this happens but if you mouse over it you will notice down here in the corner a DTC we want that DTC to set on first error currently stock it's set on second error so we need to find that as P0103 which is the math fail high DTC so if we come over here scroll down our list here down to P0103 we will find circuit high and it is on second error we're going to change this to first error Boom. Okay, so we're done on this tab. We can go ahead and close it out, open up the engine tab, and we will start underneath fuel and, as usual, oxygen sensors because we do not want to go into closed loop whenever we are tuning for this. We want to keep this thing in open loop so we're not having any fueling corrections. So we can disable the LTFTs, the uh, 
Quickest way to do that is, as I said, on your min ECT engine coolant temperature. It is uh, LTFT learn is disabled below that set point, so we're going to max that out. It goes up to 493, so if we put 480 in there, we're never going to go above 480. <laughs> and then on the max ECT, it says it'll be disabled above that, so if we drop this thing down to zero, as long as you're not trying to tune this stuff in negative zero weather, it shouldn't be an issue. Then... The other thing that we like to do is the O2 readiness. It's a little bit different generation to generation. In this one, it is versus the engine coolant temp. Uh, it will run uh, above whatever the set point is. It's generally negative 40. It's negative 40. So we want to bump this one up. So if we run this one up to 450 degrees, it will not run. The O2 sensors will not ever be considered ready, and they cannot do any kind of fueling feedback. This will force you over into open loop. So now that that's been done, we need to come down here under temperature control. We need to disable cat over temp if we still have cats. If we don't have cats, you should have disabled this already and then leave it disabled, but that's something that we will have to put back into place. And then on our DFCO, there's a couple different ways that we need to address this one. If we are on a manual car, we'll need to make the adjustments to the clutch fuel cutoff. And so we will want to bump up our enable VSS. So if we put that to 300 miles an hour, uh, you should be fine unless you guys are out there doing more than 300. So I know you Silverado guys, be careful. Don't be tuning over 300. Stick to 250, right? Let's be, be smart about that. And then on the DFCO for the throttle, we want to go ahead and change this out. So it says above this ECT DFCO will be allowed. So let's bump that up to 490 degrees. And then below this, so we can do 489 on that one. And that will verify that uh, defuel is turned off. You can also adjust the engine RPMs, but you shouldn't need to. The ECT should be enough. But if for some reason, whenever you go out there and you're tuning and you see the thing go full lean on your wideband, whenever you let off the throttle, you might come in here and adjust those. So pretty straightforward on that. Uh, if you still have disable on demand enabled, once again... Disable it permanently. If you tear into the top side of the engine, completely remove it. Delete it. That's my DOD disclaimer today. Okay, so that's basically it. We should kind of be in a good position right here. Sometimes it is not a bad idea whenever we are doing speed density tuning to come into our base high octane table and take about four degrees out. So if we put negative four in, and add that, we will subtract four degrees from the entire timing table. And that will just prevent us from going into, uh, or getting into knock. This is less of an issue whenever you're still using power enrichment. For the guys that are trying to do the narrow band, uh, short-term, long-term fueling tuning, uh, and they disable power enrichment, you really have to pull timing out in that situation. Because if you do not, you will get knock on the top end whenever you're in uh, wide open throttle because you'll be under wide open throttle at stoic as opposed to PE. So that's, but that's a topic for another day. Sorry, my nose itches. I need to shave. My whiskers are getting up in there. Okay, cool. Pretty much good there. We're going to save that again. We can save this as step one because this is our first step. So we'll hit that, download that into the computer, the ECM. And then we will jump over and we need to set up our tables for tuning. So if we come up here and open up our virtual volumetric efficiency table, it's so large. I'm sorry, this window is small. It makes it hard to see everything. I'll do my best here, but you can see the meat and potatoes of it. The manifold switch stuff. We don't care about displacement on demand. And in most platforms, we can tune just off the manifold switch close tab or a table. If you notice... The easiest way to check is to see if there is a difference between your open and closed table. If there is, you'll know something's up. You can see that this one doesn't even have a difference between the open or the closed and the DOD closed. That's because this vehicle didn't have DOD stock. But what we will do is we will use this closed table as our basis for setting up our histogram. Then whenever we make the changes, we'll make the changes to the closed and the open table to make sure that whichever table is active, uh, 
is getting changes made to it. Now you can hit me up in the comments down there below if you know for a fact that it is the closed. I'm guessing that it is the closed, but I always make changes to both just to be safe. There are some platforms out there that use it. The open and closed, they're going to be different. I think they're the four-cylinder turbos maybe. Once again, if you know that for a fact, hit me up down in the comments below. And we can go into what you would do on a different video for setting up two separate VE graphs uh, with filtering on there based on whether that manifold switch is open or closed. But for now, we'll leave that open in the background. We've got the scanner open up. We're going to go ahead and add a new graph. And we will do add graph, add table. And our parameter is going to be our Lambda AFR. Let me drag this over so you can see it this time. Sorry, guys. Last time I didn't have this thing in. But if we go down to the very bottom maths, Lambda and AFR here, we're going to grab our EQ ratio error. If we're tuning in EQ ratio, if you're tuning in AFR, right beside it is AFR error ratio. Boom. But we'll go ahead and build this one off EQ error ratio. And now the first step that we've got to do is come back over. We're going to have engine RPMs as our column. So if we copy our column axis labels, we can jump over to our scanner, add RPMs up here. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, we can use the generic uh, sensor in this situation. And then we will paste Control V. Control V is in Victor. If you don't use shortcuts, paste that in there. Same ordeal. We will now jump over. And this is on manifold absolute pressure. A little bit different than the other videos that I put out that used a pressure ratio. So the cool thing about that one is this one's straightforward. But we will copy the row axis labels. Same ordeal. And then we'll come back over. Add in manifold absolute pressure. Generic. And then make sure it's in KPA, which is what we were reading. You want to make sure that that unit matches the units right there on your table. That's important because if it doesn't, things will get wonky. Then we can control V, paste in our manifold pressure range. And this is basically done. So let's do what we do. Bump our decimals out to two, jump it up to 10 cell hits. We're going to do shading. We're going to do 10 on the high side, negative 10 on the low side. Like I like it. Color for the low side is going to be that pretty, pretty green. And then the color for the high side is going to be the oh crap red. We are running lean. Our engine is in trouble. Not really, but we're probably all right. So, And that should be good. So if we close this out and take a look at it, boom, we got data. This guy is running a little lean, as you can see. So we've got a log. Yeah, a lot of information. Hey, don't pay attention to the scaling on this. The scaling on mine is cranked way up. Your scaling will not be every 50 RPMs, nor do I suggest it to be. This was an experiment gone wrong. But nonetheless, you still get the uh, idea. So what we now need to do is come in here, run our log, get all of our data, vroom, 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 vroom. And then whenever we're done, we will highlight our table, copy it, and then jump back over to our manifold switch closed. And then we're going to use the magic uh, paste special multiply by percentage half. Okay, there we go. We have got changes in there. Beautiful, beautiful changes. The first step is done. So we will calculate our coefficients. Here's what I like to do. I like to calculate my coefficients. You're going to see all of this shift. Whenever this happens, this is a giant math parameter that's being calculated in the background. And there are zone numbers. I'm going to go ahead and show you these zone numbers. It's going to dump out everything that I just changed. We'll have to put that back in there. But if we click these zone numbers, these are different zones. You can see where these zeros are, this is the zero zone, your first zone technically. Then here's your next zone and your next zone. Everywhere there's a number, that represents one zone on your virtual volumetric efficiency table. I have got a video out there. Uh, I'll put a link up in the corner. Boom. Actually, I think it'll be way up in that corner. I will put a link up in that corner that talks about the RPM zone boundaries and why it's important. Because whenever you start tuning, you might start seeing on the fringes of these zones, numbers get a little bit out of whack. And so you might have to manually make adjustments within these zones. So this is a zone right here, 4,500 to 57.5. If we watch and I paste special this, there's going to be some changes in there. 47, 
to 57540 something so we got one right in this area somewhere in that area we know that this is a zone but we are only making changes to this area of the zone now we want to come in here and we want to interpolate these where we have these easy low-hanging fruit kind of situations that we can interpolate in between vertical and horizontal bounds to fill in blanks as much as possible this will smooth things out and whenever it goes to do the zone calculation it'll make it a little bit easier for the computer to calculate it properly so anywhere that you've got two three maybe even four gaps in here you want to come in here and smooth these now this this is where you're starting to get a little bit far and you're probably if you interpolate this you're going to skew your fueling off a little bit that's not to say that it can't be done that's just a heads up hey that might be an area that you need to pay attention to whenever you log next time because it's going to be off and i'll show you why i'm not going to fill all these in but i'm going to fill a lot of these in real quick just so you can kind of see what's going on love the interpolate effect brings everything back in and so there's going to be a zone in here that's going to be in the middle here somewhere that we're going to have enough data in that 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 zone is going to be able to calculate pretty close to exactly what we put in there and that's going to get dialed in very well uh but there's going to be zones on the fringes like up here where we're just dipping into the zones and because of that because we're changing one on the fringe it's going to skew the rest of this zone out so if i now come in here and hit this calculate coefficients button which we have to do that's where it changes this table into that long math parameters uh it changed all that you see how all this changed colors that's because look and there's a there's a line right here boom 7500 75 kpa there is a line where nothing changed below that that's because we did not exceed 75 kpa and we didn't get into that zone this is a different zone down here that we didn't touch but everywhere in here it had to adjust these values to make them work with the changes that we made so the one that we were looking at earlier this zone that's like kind of in this area right here we had updated these values it did these values to make them uh, make sense to make everything kind of have a sanity check versus what's in there but the problem is that now these values that right in this area that we didn't make the changes to are probably a little bit off and that's where people start to have frustrations on virtual volumetric efficiency and chasing down the fringe areas where things get kind of out of whack and so if you go out and you identify kind of where you're at specifically in cruising whenever you're at low throttle just doing highway speed cruising there's going to be an error or an error there's going to be an area down here somewhere where that's basically where you spend most of your time and you can sculpt a zone around that once again i'll put a link in the corner i, I suggest you go out there and watch that video about doing zone and that will make help to make more sense as to why that's happening but now that we've made this change we can highlight this whole table copy the whole table switch over to the open uh, table and then paste it in and calculate nothing will really uh, change because well I guess some things did change in there but we're not too worried about that that's done we can close out the VVE and we will save it as step two and now flash it and rinse and repeat speed density tuning requires a lot of tuning if you don't have a like a dyno that you're set up on where you can change the load to literally fill out the graphs you know one column or row at a time by adjusting the load at rpms and things like that this just requires a lot of driving you have to go out you have to drive you have to go up hills down hills you know driving third gear driving fourth gear driving fifth gear if you got it you have to shift around all these different cells to hit all of them to be effective at getting all that dialed in so this is an iterative process that takes a long time you know speed density tuning is the bulk of the tuning that we do and the worst thing about it is is speed density tuning if we still have a mass airflow sensor is the least uh impactful tuning that you will do so we will we, we do the mass airflow sensor real quick and it's real effective then we do the speed density tuning and it takes forever and it has less an effect on it because then we switch back over and basically primarily use the math 
But now that that's all said and done, say we just got done doing 15 speed density tunes and our, our table's looking good. We've got it to the point where, you know, we're, we're, we're shooting for that two degrees rich or something or 2% rich. And so if you go in, you're running pretty much 9.97, 0 0.98 Lambda across the whole board. If you need to, if you get this thing dialed in and it's basically right around one, shift the whole thing by 2%. Multiply the whole thing by 1.02 to shift your airflow up 2%, to give yourself 2% more fuel, and then keep it on the rich side throughout the entire table. Calculate that thing out and rock and roll. But whenever we're done, we have to open up our compare file. So if we go back in and find our as found, we need to fix what we changed. We can go ahead and go back into our base timing, add four degrees back in, but spoilers, we're going to adjust timing next after this, so you don't necessarily have to do this. This is That's a good starting point to adjusting your timing back in. You can throw the four back in there, watch your knock now that you've got everything tuned. Make sure you're not getting into knock on the high octane table and shifting down to the low octane table. Uh, if we go back into our airflow... Uh, oh, that's not the right as found. <laughs> Hold on a second. That's an old one. It's like, that shouldn't be like that. There we go. Uh, we didn't change anything on airflow this time because that was just uh, for math. Underneath oxygen sensors, we'll set this stuff back up. Put our long-term fueling back in. If you are running 2% rich on this, the LTFT system will pull you back in line eventually. So it's not the end of the world. You also need to make sure and reset your long-term fuel trims through the scanner in between or whenever you're done writing this and turning these back on. Uh, but 102, 284, we'll put this back in. 102, 284. And then our O2 readiness was negative 40 across the board. So if we highlight that in, plug it in negative 40, boom. And then same ordeal. We'll come down the line here. Power and rich, temperature control. Put COT back on if you have catalytic converters. We'll do our fuel cutoffs, 8677. 77 and then our VSS was six mile an hour and then don't forget to come back in on your engine diagnostics and we can change our PID back over to mill on second error and our airflow failure we can shift these back over to 14.5 and 291 You will have to uh, clear your DTCs after this. Uh, but go ahead and save this. Download it in as your final. Clear your DTCs. Reset your long-term fuel trims. And you are good to go. After that, we have done mass airflow on the Gen 4. We have now done speed density on the Gen 4. Next step, which is the, the, the fun step, is let's dial in that timing and... Maybe I probably should do a uh, just kind of a quick tips video on the Gen 4 on some other things that you can change to get a little power out there. But this is the meat and potatoes. This is the important stuff. Hopefully you found this information useful. Uh, if you did, as I said, you know, throw me some throw me some thumbs up that way. If you didn't like it, throw a thumbs up that way. But as I said, if you throw a thumbs down, what did I just say? Throw a thumbs up if you like it. <laughs> That's the important part. If you throw a thumbs down, though, hit up the comments. Let me know what you didn't like about the video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, any of that stuff. You know, once again, we're a family. All of us here in the garage, you guys are the garage. Uh, I want to appreciate everybody who stopped by, everybody who supported it. Tomorrow, uh, the Thursday live event, you know, it's the live show in tune with the garage. So make sure if you're available 8 Eastern, I love seeing you guys show up out there, ask questions, have discussion, conversation. You know, I'm hoping to get to the point where we have so many people in there. I would just like to see a slew of sidebar conversations going on while I'm hosting the show. So you guys are awesome. Uh, thanks for stopping by the garage as usual. ABT, always be tuning. And uh, I mean, that's it, man. Everybody, I will see you tomorrow.